Welcome to the Getting the Deal Done podcast series. I'm John Martinka. My special guest today is Craig Hanela. Craig is the owner of Biken Meadow Products and Valley Nut and Bolt. Biken is in Kent, Washington. Uh, Valley is in Olympia. And welcome, Craig. Oh, thank you, John. <laughs> nice Tell, to be start by telling, you, telling us a little bit about your background and why you decided you wanted to buy and own a business. All right. So uh, by uh, by education and initial trade, I'm a mechanical engineer. So I, I was basically a mechanical engineer in quality for about 20 years, 10 years at Phillips, worked overseas a lot, doing a lot of operational stuff. Um, did with this was with Sonicare toothbrushes. I left there, went to Microsoft for about 10 years, uh, fix, fixing you know, the Xbox. They had a lot of, a lot of quality problems at that point kind of transitioned into setting up uh, manufacturing uh, lines and productions in about five different continents for them, about 15 different countries I was supporting. That kind of went, uh, failed when they had a failed Nokia merger. I got laid off. I, I happens, by just by happenstance, ran into you, John, at one of your uh, presentations on business buying. I was like, well, that kind of sounds interesting. So, no, we, you know, we talked about it a little bit over time, and I said, hey, that, I, I want to do that. Instead of, you know, just throwing my hat and, or jumping back in the corporate world. You know, I was doing a little bit on that. But I said, well, no, I want to want to trial this uh, business acquisition or business buying element. And so uh, with your help, you know, we took about a year, you know, to look, you know, go through the process of figuring out what kind of company you want, uh, look for some due, due diligence, you know, after, you know, probably the third or fourth offer, um, or just by happenstance, again, ran into – my first company, Bike and Metal Products, uh, which is a primary uh, precision sheet metal fabricator. It started back in 1939. And so this is my first, kind of first to the industry. You know, I, I kind of jumped in there not knowing too much. Being an engineer, I kind of know manufacturing. I like, I wanted to build something. So I kind of, you know, this came up and it's like, hey, it looked like a good opportunity. So, okay. So, uh, <clears throat> What, what about the second company, uh, Valley? They were, as I recall you telling me, they were a vendor to Biken. Yeah. So in, as we progressed through Biken for the first, you know, uh, I've gone for a little over almost seven, actually seven years ago, I think, yes, no, today. Yeah. Seven years ago today, we, we, we closed out on Biken. Um, so we went through our uh, ups and downs. In the last couple of years, we have uh, started to work with a company called Valley Nut and Bolt down in Olympia. They do a lot of uh, bio a lot of our galvanizing because most a lot of the stuff that biking produces uh supports the constructions or utilities stuff parts that are outside to be galvanized and they and they kind of took over as our uh, galvanizer of, of choice for especially a lot of the small parts and as well you know you know talking with you and reading your book on you know merger growth by acquisition is like well I, I reached out to my you know he was my number i was number my number two vendor at the time it's like, hey, what's your exit strategy? You know, a few months later, it's like, you know, contacts me. It's like, hey, no, I really don't have one. Or my exit strategy changed because of uh, my, my sons have moved on. And so, so it's like, yeah, you know, naturally a good fit. You know, they were doing a lot of our, our, our work, you know, a lot of vertical integration opportunities, great company. And then it's like, yeah, you know, the opportunities present itself. And it's, it was kind of a win-win for uh, the previous owner of value and as well as uh biking itself so okay so before we get to some of the things you did at biking uh and uh, things that contributed to you doubling the sales and tripling the profit in your term of ownership uh you just got a nice award or two yes we, talk we about just, that so yeah so we actually have it right here so we actually for this last year we have the Camps Manufacturer of the Year Award, which is a very, you know, very proud that we were able to get that from the team. And basically it was given to companies that have, have shown a lot of innovation, a lot of employee engagement, have, have kind of pushed the envelope a little bit, um, which, you know, it's a great thing that being awarded and be recognized in the, in the peers. Um, and also I was, I was honored to get the finalists for the uh, manufacturing leader of the year award. So again, it was awesome stuff. But you know, getting the one with the with the overall team was great. You know, they, it's a great aspect of kind of saying, "Hey, we're, we are going the right direction." People are acknowledging what we're doing. 
and we, we've established a great team that we can really kind of keep leveraging and pushing the pushing the growth sales and the uh, profitability uh, as well as making actually the most important part is making it a, a better and better location to work you know improving the work environment on a daily basis so. okay so you came into biken at the time the company you know was many decades old you said it started in 1939 yes so uh, uh almost 80 years at that time uh of course you had to do some things i mean that typically happens when a company's been owned by the same same people for so many years so let's talk about some of the things that you did and let's start with the people uh, yeah well you know the you know jumping into a company you you don't know too much and yeah it was owned by the same family for 44 years prior uh so there's a lot of legacy of how this is how we done it this is how we haven't done it and and i kind of i got in a hole pretty quick and you know, i bought the company in december uh, December, January, and February are typically the, the, the losing months of the year. So in a matter of three months, I was four hundred thousand uh, dollars in the hole, and I didn't even hardly know <laughs> what I was doing yet. So, uh, so there's a lot of challenges to that. Um, yeah, in the in terms of the legacy and the culture wise, you know, one of the things is you know we have to you know, get away, start getting things a little bit more clean, uh, clean, a little more organized. You know, we still have fought that way. Um, and then, you know, I've actually started over the last few years to figure out, you know, the really big pitfalls was the owners, myself as well, uh, uh, because, uh, and I kind of fall a little bit in the shoes, but I was kind of fighting this a little bit is basically, am I an owner, am I an employee or I'm an owner? Uh, and it was always been based around an employee first and then an owner second and trying that culture around a little bit from the hierarchical standpoint, that's been the bigger challenge. And one of the other elements that's really drove it is, you know, saying yes to everything. We're always chasing money. We can make money here, but, you know, never really in the, in, the, in terms of the culture wise, really understanding the opportunity cost. If I do mm -hmm. this, it, it, I can't do this, something else. If I take this job that I've been doing for 30, 40 years, yeah, I make a 100% profit on it, but I forego doing $20,000 of jobs. And it's like, yeah. And, and so you're constantly kind of undermining what you're doing. You're trying to be jack of all, master of nothing. And that's really, you know, we we bounce back and forth. We had big com customers. They come in and they come out. You know, and it's just we're losing our identity, you know. And really, in the last three years, we basically say, you know what? Um, we're gonna really identify what is our what is our strategic uh, advantage. Where do we actually do well? Uh, at that time, we were doing uh, our number one customer was SpaceX. We we're doing stuff for the um, satellites going up in up in space. You know, it was really cool. Meteorite shields, oh, it's all fancy and all that. And the next job we we're doing is going the dirt. You know, construction stuff. It's like we can't we, we can't be precision, high tech, and then industrial, low tech, non cosmetic, and back to back. You know, so we actually we actually forego. We say, you know what, Sp the SpaceX of the world, we're not going to do, we're not going to support you at this time. Uh, we want to make we kind of keep them on the back burner until we have a really good space. You know, we're we're set up, to, we can be successful by reducing our scope, reducing our customer base from like 140 to like 70 or so, but make it so you know we're we can engage with them at a, a much higher level. And so when we start doing that, and then they say, okay, you know, it allows our 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 operations to be not so much randomized and so and they get a lot more rhythm you know in, in the past we were probably 80 percent job shop stuff and 20 percent like kind of repeated production and probably in the last two years we were basically we're basically 90 percent oem kind of uh contract manufacturer we're doing the same thing and about 20 percent job shop stuff um so that has helped uh, tremendously but that also makes it so our we need to look at our uh, our IT systems. You know, our IT systems are you know they're just solid, they're normal for our job shop. But they were put in place in the 1990s, late 1990s, around a job shop, and we're in a process right now of of, of going through an uh, um, evaluation. We're actually making the call today on which new ERP system we're going to use for both companies. Um, so that's done. Uh, that'll be awesome because, you know, the IT systems have to pull you forward. But in terms of some of the operational things we've, we're doing, uh, we 
we took a big gamble on one of our biggest customers. Now we actually bought in a lot of equipment uh, prior to even having some significant work with them. We put, uh, we invested well over a hundred thousand dollars and we were only doing maybe 10 or $15,000 a quarter with them on some tooling because I say, well, I think there's a good potential here and let's do it right. And we bought a lot of automation. We have a complete robotic, you know, we do, we tr- trans- transitioned to a lot of manual robot, uh, manual welding to robotic welding, uh, which, dramatically increase our output and we're we are producing a million pounds of steel a quarter versus we're, we're doing maybe a quarter million pounds of steel quarter prior um and then we're just we're getting a lot more leveraging of our our people you know we're trying to or ups we're upskilling you know our, what used to be um a, a guy or gal doing welding on the side you know this and that you know they're they're programming robots now uh, so that's been a tremendous help you know, we're in, we're right now we're at 23 24 employees if, if you include myself and we're doing double what we were doing two years ago with 39 people so and that that just all goes down to the bottom line and a lot more efficiencies a lot more uh, repeatable product um, and we re, and we continuously are looking at new ways to in, in, enhance our our uh, our products and our quality you know we're starting to do some reliability testing and we've piped in you know we're, we're getting away from mixing gas on site. We're doing mixing, getting away from bottles. We're doing just continuously looking at how we can uh, get more for less. So okay, how how did the people who have remained take to all these changes? Uh, they don't. You know, most of the people that are here, eighty uh, percent are here. They were you know, maybe seventy five percent are the same people that were here when I bought. Um, so the ones that have been around, they 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 have been very receptive you know sometimes one thing that we had to do is you know we had to take them on some tours we have to we had to show them you know what it is like outside the four walls because because there was the prevalence of we've always done it that way um but you never know you can't expect somebody hey how do you do this differently if they never know so we did a lot of tours we we brought them around to places uh to to kind of get the the juices going you know um um, and seeing that, you know, how fat, you know, how people can do things, how it can be, your, your work environment can be better, how it can make your job easier, you know, automation and all that doesn't take away from jobs. It again, alleviates the dull, d- dangerous and boring stuff. Um, and it takes, it takes a while. Um, and kind of my, one of my lessons from that, from my current one is um, I can go faster. You know, I should have gone faster if I knew more of, of you know, instead of, following a little, little bit of the legacy of the previous owners of like, you know what you need to do. Let's just make a wholesale uh, change and make it fast. Okay. Um, and that in an in instance leading into Valley, nut and bolt, you know, great company, a lot, they have a lot more workers than biking does uh, about 39 employees, about half of sales. Again, the old legacy um, lifestyle business, a lot more disorganized a little bit. Um, but you know we have we have been pumping out a lot of product down there. Uh, we're going through you know we upgrading their systems. You know we put a server. They never had a server. Didn't have a server down there for, for equipment. Uh, we went from a biking what biking did in a year in terms of getting the HR management system on your phone and payroll, uh, which has been great. Uh, Valley did it in six weeks. So we're leveraging our learnings and say hey let's go faster. Uh, we, Doing, doing a tremendous amount, you know, we're changing the ERP of both, you know, in a matter of by April 1st, they're going to go from a, a ERP system that hasn't been updated since 1991 or it's green screen to a modern one in like six months. And so it's going to be amazing. It's going very fast for them, but they see some tremendous benefits. So. Okay. So you're putting a new ERP system, uh, you talked about the uh, automated welding and, you know, the HR payroll going into, you know, e-versions of stuff. Yep. Uh, any any other process improvements? Uh, and I, I'm going to ask because I hear that I've heard this. Okay. One of the issues with some of these legacy businesses the we've always done it this way is a lack of documented systems. Yeah, so you know we have uh, about three or four years ago we uh, became a, an aerospace certified AS ninety one hundred shop at Biken, uh, which was a big thing. Uh, we're still, you know, 
uh, because very few jump into that space, especially at that time, a company that's basically 80 years old. And so there's a lot of documentation, there's a lot of different ways of doing things. You know, we're not perfect. Um, and we, we, we've done quite well with that uh, in spite of our IT system that doesn't support it. Um, and, and the aspect of not really having the, you know, the horsepower to manage those systems. And what I've done recently is we actually have a former QA auditor that works as a 1099 employee. He manages our QA. And we actually have our AS audit this Friday. He's doing it. I used to be doing it, you know, by trying to run the company and be the head QA person. And head, it, that doesn't work. You know, you're spread too thin. Um, so, you know, we, we've got our ITAR as well. Not necessarily because we've used it, because some of the customers ask for it. Um, but we're at the point was we, we have improved our qualities, but we need to improve our systems that allow us to do it uh, easier. And people like people understand the importance of it. And you also have, we're basically an AS certified under brute force management, a lot of external Excel spreadsheets of managing, you know, whether it be calibration or audits and that versus the kind of integrating the system in the next rev of our IT system, that's going to be much easier because it's going to be integrated into our overall IT package. So, Okay. So you mentioned <laughs> that when you bought Valley Nut and Bolt, one of the lessons you had learned from Boykin was uh, move faster on things. What yeah. other lessons, you know, what challenges you went through and any other lessons that you learned that others could benefit from? Yeah, I think one of the big things is, uh, and they've fought that a little bit, is uh, having the owner being a bottleneck. I mean, even just changing, you know, whether it be an account or a bank account or not necessarily bank accounts, but, you know, Website things, they're all as okay. Well, how do what name do I put in there? It's all about the owner. I always put it on the owner. Uh, so you're you're building in systems, processes, and tools where the owner is the bottleneck of everything. So when I when I we've been upgrading our system down there, as I like, no, the system's not about me. It's about the company. So how do we you know set up accounts, set up the processes so that it's not I'm not building in bottlenecks from the get. -go. Um, and one of the bigger things, you know, I've learned, especially, you know, I'm looking back in terms of this last acquisition is uh, we went too slow in the acquisition. It was too slow. We, one thing because of the previous owner, you know, hey, we want, hey, let's do it, let's do it ourselves versus hire somebody like yourself, John, to manage the acquisition. We, we should have closed the deal five months earlier than it, than it was, but we are busy running companies and that, and that's not our, our expertise. We're expert, we could find the companies, but really having a better acquisition team and use them um, because yeah, we closed in July, but we were, we should have closed in February. Uh, but there were just, you know, things that we didn't know. We we're trying to run. We, we, we just got kind of hung up on the day-to-day -day task. And then we look at the opportunity cost of not closing out a deal five months earlier. Yeah. That was, a, that was a lot of money that, you know, spend somebody 20, 30, whatever it would be in terms of consulting to help drive it. It would have paid for itself way more um okay. and then i would have been, i would have already been in my new erp system now versus you know, playing around with it so i think one of the, my biggest learnings is is the delegation side just because you can do it doesn't mean you should and don't be cheap uh spend the money get the right people on the on your team whether they are a full-time employee a 1099 or a consultant get them on and just go and let that let the horsepower work so I think the most important thing in all that is you said, don't let the owner be a bottleneck. And I, every time I hear someone talk about that, I hear, I think about my past clients. I did five projects with this company from, uh, you know, acquisitions to uh, potential sale to an industry company. But the one that always stood out was when he brought me in to figure out what was going on that they weren't making what they should. And, did focus groups with employees, management, all kinds of stuff. And it was a simple answer. You're the bottleneck. Everything has to go across your desk. And we, you know, we put in a delegation. I, I put in a delegation process with him to get him to do it. And his profit quintupled, went up five times. Yeah, it's amazing. It's like, and that's probably the hardest part that, those that valley are, I'm not there 
it's, you know, it's an hour and 15 minutes from my house. I go there twice a week, uh, not because I necessarily need to be, because I'm not a part of, I don't have any transactional activities, but I'm there to kind of support and say, hey, give some guidance and where we're going. But not having that person there that's making all the decisions every day, it's like, you guys you guys are experts. You know how to do this. Let's, let's, when we revamp the system, let's make it so it's self-sustaining, not, not, not hey, if I get hit by a bus, everything falls apart part again it's like that doesn't work so i think that's they're starting to get around with that that's the hardest part you know when they you know had a, a owner there that's been there basically 50 years and his, his house was right next door and so it, you know he's there every day you know all the decisions go through great guy great people but you know you're again limited to what one person you know one person can only manage so much you know i i i, I see especially in the manufacturing space i guess that's where i'm more familiar with now most company companies get to the two to five million in sales and that's as far as it can go because that's as far as typically somebody can manage and know if they want their 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 hands on all the strings of the company that's as far as they go and so letting go of those strings and and and, and helping out with those continuous improvement stuff and then get help and give them some guidance but but not putting yourself in terms of a, a bottleneck that actually allows you to grow tremendously yeah and and talking like biking you know, we've we've gone yeah we've tripled our profit in the last year and a half like like some of these continuous improvement but also get my, myself out of there and actually saying no and it's the aspect of value yeah they're they're not a ro- they're not financials are not robust but you know, I, i'm guessing in the next year and a half you know they'll be on a similar trajectory you know uh, biking is running almost four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand dollars in annual sales per employee. Uh, Valley is running about one hundred fifty, about three t- three x the efficiency. Um, they're not going to c- close that gap overnight, um, but th- they will. They're going to go. They'll be significantly better. And on that, it's not just about you know more profit to the companies, but how to make the, their work environment better. Just like the HR management system, it, you know, we put a payroll system. It, it it looked in terms of our accountant, our controller. It was taking her three days to do payroll. It takes her two week, two day, two hours now. So now, you know, so spending two, it's two hundred fifty bucks a month for a payroll process that that saves your controller two and a half days of every payroll. You know that makes her life so much easier. Yeah. Um, and so in in looking at that that train of thought of of all the positions. You know, one of the big things with our our legacy IT systems is it's very hard to train people. You know, you require uh, 18 players. You know, I I don't want to build 18 processes. I want to put systems and tools that allow a B team or a C team player to act like an A team because I can't scale A A players. They don't exist. So you got to build your your company around having solid people, but not have to be, you know, the, you know, the, the people that you can, they're one in a million. You know, I want to find solid people, provide them with the systems and tools that help them to be more efficient. So, and have have your employees, especially on the shop side of the business, have they uh, been pretty good about they like about these changes? They like to change. Yeah, them? so they like to change. You know, we 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 instituted like a quarterly bonuses. You no, know, we were like mm-hmm. five or six quarters in a row. We give them a bonus. No, I'm, I'm very open kimonos on the books, and this is what, exactly what we're doing. This is exactly how the company's performing. This is our, our objectives for the quarter, and they're and they're they're kicking ass. You know, we double our output with with less people. You know, and they say the company does well, you do well. You know, everybody, even if they work one day of a quarter, and we get a they get a bonus. It, it's a prorated one. You know, it might be not everybody's the same, but everybody ha- has a skin in the game. Yeah, and so that's nice. And then the other aspect of this, you know, we, you know, from the HR side, um, one of our goals for twenty four is to start some kind of financial literacy and some training for the employee base. So you know, train them, you know, educate them on financials one hundred and one. Probably be a third party so they they don't listen to their owner that's talking about some stuff, but help them out. You know, they're all s- struggling to some degree. Some some you know just because of you know, the nature of things are more expensive or just not understanding how to manage their time or money or whatever. Um, so we're going to have a third party come in and start implementing this. So, cause we don't want to have the aspect of giving a bonus out the next day, somebody comes in with a new car and it's like, ah, oh, damn, why did you do that? You know, that's not a financial wise thing to do. <laughs> so stuff like that. So, you know, we, 
doing as much as we can from the company side, but then then from the personal side, hey, giving them the opportunity to, to talk with a financial advisor to understand the, the benefit structure is a little bit better. You know, we have a pretty extensive benefits. You know, we pay 100% of insurance. We do, we do maternity, paternity leave. We do grandma and grandpa. You have a you have a kid that's born, they get a leave too. You have all this stuff, but they don't. Sometimes they don't really understand all that. Uh, so that's my fault. I need to work on uh, putting an educational system in for our employee base as well. Okay. Uh, final thoughts, Greg. Uh, I think right now, you know, for me, uh, there's a lot of great opportunities out there, uh, especially with the baby boomers. There's 10,000 baby boomers uh, um, retiring every day. You know, I'm looking actively to, to buy more. Um, I think the biggest thing is to delegate, don't be a perfectionist, move fast and take advantage of opportunities. You don't know what those opportunities will be, but uh, try to build up your systems and your teams that that are ready for something when it becomes available. Uh, but don't just sit back back on your laurels, uh, clean up your clean up your books, clean up your team, and really assess where your true strengths are and don't try to do too much. So. Okay, very good advice. Uh, to wrap up, this is Craig Hanala, the uh, owner of Bike and Metal Products and Valley Nut and Bolt, and the recent recipient of the Camps Manufacturer of the Year Award. Camps is a manufacturing uh, industry trade group in the greater Seattle area. Thank you, Craig. Cool. Thank you, John.